Does anybody, any committee member not pick up their packet of information before we get started? Okay, well I think we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We've got uh, some, uh, some stuff to cover tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, our agenda tonight, uh, we, we have the sur a survey report for you so that you have the results of the public information session um, work that, ha that had been completed in the survey period. So we've got some reporting on that. There's also updated information as, you, uh, as, as we have discussed. The packets of materials all have the new 17, the uh, preliminary September 30th, 1718 uh, data incorporated into all the options now. And, um, and so that's some information that we're going to give you some time to study uh, tonight in tonight's meeting. Uh, once you have some time to look through the survey results and the options, um, we're going to have you perform an e option evaluation exercise as a group. And that's just uh, an exercise that really uh, focuses you on the options as it relates to the criteria. Um, we also have a couple new options to share with you tonight based on uh, feedback and ongoing review of the options. Um, so, so we're gonna get right into it. We're sitting here at meeting five um, and we have uh, one more meeting after this, uh, December 6th after the, the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, at this meeting, our final meeting, you guys will be working to provide a recommendation. So we have about five options right now. We may end up, depending on uh, the results of uh, the, the outcome of how that meeting evolves at that last meeting, you may end up with seven or six or seven before we start really uh, go working towards a recommendation. But this last meeting is really solely focused on recommendations. So, so you've got time to, to get to the... Uh, to the final recommendation. After that, we'll be presenting the recommend, your recommendation to the board on, in February after the Christmas holiday. And there'll be board hearings in February, um, uh, later, in the, later in February, and the board will make, be making a decision, a vote in March on uh, a plan for this area. A couple of requests and follow-ups, uh, follow-ups to questions that you had had. Um, one of the questions was about Oliver Beach and Chase Elementary Schools and why aren't they part of this process? And the, 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 the reasoning is, is that those schools are geographically isolated. There's not a whole lot of, uh, there's a lot of territory uh, area in between Vincent Farm and those schools. It doesn't have any population. And so the district had determined that, the, that, that, uh, that the population isn't in close proximity to, to, to these other schools in our study area. And so they are not part of this, of this particular um, process for those reasons. Um, an important reminder is that the potential student yield from approved developments is factored into the enrollment projection data that the school district uh, puts together. Um, there's a list of developments and total number of units planned in your handouts. And uh, you, you've talked and looked, talked through the development information and looked through that a lot throughout the course of the study. But that stuff is incorporated into the, into the projections that, that you've been looking at, and the yield data and such has also been provided to you. If you're interested in seeing more uh, in depth on uh, the, the student yield factors, you can go to this district webpage to find it under strategic planning for the student yield factor report. And, um, and that's, this link is also included in your packets because the PowerPoint, you have a copy of the PowerPoint as well. Some other uh, reminders is uh, we did see some comments from the public about, um, well, we'd like to move to this school because that means we're going to move to this, this middle, we're going to change middle schools. And I've said this before, but I want to make it clear that, um, that this process is only uh, about elementary schools. So the, your, the, the recommendation and when the board makes, it, makes a vote in March, the vote is only going to impact elementary school assignment. Um, it does not impact it where your house is, is zoned to for middle school or high school at this, at this point. So, the, so, you, so uh, households may move elementary schools in terms of where they're assigned, but it does not impact where they're assigned to middle school and high school as part of this process. Um, so yeah, change in elementary boundaries does not result in a change to middle school boundaries. Um, the district does try to align boundaries so that the entire zone or neighborhoods are within the zone and stay together, but, um, but your focus as a committee is strictly on elementary schools, and elementary school assignments are the only things that will be impacted 
as a result of this work. There are some questions about Kearney. And, uh, if, if Kearney Elementary School requires capacity relief in the future, what types of relief strategies may be employed? Um, and based on the 2015 projections, four of the five relocatable units were placed at Kearney to accommodate growth projected for the 16-17 school year. Uh, but to date, Kearney has not reached the projected enrollment for which the units were added. Um, and it's possible that the units could be recommended for removal. And you could see here that the, the change in utilization over the last three years, it was 100, uh, around 100% the last two years, and then this year it's coming at about 97% utilization. So, um, so Kearney isn't, uh, doesn't appear to be on the up, on the up uh, scale in terms of projected enrollment. It's more stable and, and slowly on a slow, um, slow decline. The Office of Transportation, the Baltimore County Office of Transportation has evaluated the concerns expressed by residents of Planning Block 30 and offer the following for your consideration. As you recall, Planning Block 30 was a very vocal at our public information session um, and they were, uh, they, they, were, they were very passionate about um, staying at Chapel Hill and not moving to the new elementary school, which is where they're zoned to and, and the options that, uh, that, were, that were presented at the public information session. The, the Office of Transportation has been looking at their co comments and concerns, and here's what they have to say. Um, Travel to the new school will require a right turn on Honeygo Boulevard and then a left turn on Joppa Road. Um, transportation did not identify any distance or speed-related hazards with a bus turning on Honeygo from Sunnyshade Court and successfully getting into position to turn onto East Joppa Road. And I went out there and drove it again today as well. And, um, and, and, and I, I, I concur, there's a good distance between a right turn out of that subdivision before you have to turn left onto Joppa Road. Um, and the distance between two intersections is more than ample at 1,350 feet, which is a quarter mile, between that, when you turn out of that um, subdivision to, until you get to Joppa Road. Um, and, if it, and if a hazard did exist or presented itself at a later date, the bus would be rerouted to ensure the safety of students. And so, uh, so if, if that planning block does end up being in the new school, this district will ensure the safety of those students and they will not put them in, a, in an unsafe, uh, compromising position. Um, some additional information about the new uh, Northeast Ele Ele Area Elementary School is uh, careful consideration has gone to the design of the school's entrance to ensure safety of pedestrians and walkers. New sidewalks are being added in some areas along Joppa Road. Right now, there are no sidewalks down there when you get down to the bottom of that hill where the new school is being built. Um, new deceleration and acceleration lanes are being added as well. And a northbound dedicated left turn lane from Joppa Road to Honeygo Boulevard is also being added. So in addition to the new school being constructed, they're also making and planning some, some, some substantial improvements to the road leading into that school as well. There was a, um, some feedback on a planning block adjustment, and um, their planning block 116 is a planning block that's across the street. This is a, off of Bel Air Road. It's, it's not far from uh, Perry Hall Elementary School. And it's, it's the planning block actually goes down the middle of Pine Hill Road. And there are four houses, and I've circled them here. There are four homes that are, um, that are in another planning block. And there are zero students in this, in this area that's impacted. But there was a suggestion by a committee member, uh, and as they keep, keep reviewing this, and even a public member had brought it to the committee member's attention that this was, that this was the case. And the suggestion was just to keep all of Pine Hill Road in one planning block, which I think certainly makes uh, logical sense. Uh, four affected homes and zero students. Um, and so you'll see in the options A through C, the ones that were presented at the public information session, we went ahead and put those, these four homes in, um, in the same planning block. And so, th so this was an adjustment that we had made, but we certainly want to get your uh, take on it. And I wanted, before we move ahead with making that adjustment to these, to these four homes, I wanted to know, if w is there anybody on the committee that's opposed to us making that change? We don't want to do things without your without your blessing as a committee. Um, if anybody, if any committee member is opposed to us making this adjustment of the four homes um, into the same planning block, which would be, they would be folded into planning block 116, 
If anyone's opposed to that, can you please raise your hand? Okay, so nobody, nobody's opposed. It does, it does make logical sense to keep one, the whole street together. It's a small residential street, and we don't have any opposition to that. So you'll see in all of the options, though, that whole street remains together intact in, in every single option that's being, that's, that, that we're working through. Other updates, uh, all of the numbers are now derived using the preliminary September 30th, 2017 counts. Um, the, the plots, the plot data all has um, updated planning block numbers. Um, the interactive map that's online also shows the updated planning block counts that show the 1718 data. You'll see each small group has a small 11 by 17 maps that you had, you had asked because it was more manageable to, to look at them in a 11 by 17 type format. But we also have a large set of plots over on table if any group wants to work off of the plot maps, we have a set over there. And you can always go back and reference the maps that are posted on the walls as well if you need to see more detail. And uh, furthermore, there's a, each laptop, every group has a laptop, and the interactive map can be looked at to look at the options and uh, planning block counts and things like that at your tables. You'll notice in the data that enrollment has increased in several schools, and the study area total utilization is now 105%. So I think it was 102, we were looking at 16, 17, now it's at 105%. So, it, so enrollment has gone up in this, in this region, in this study area. I'm gonna give you a little overview of the public information uh, session summary, uh, summary of the results. A couple things to remind you is that um, don't use the feedback that's, that's in this public information session as the sole determinant for what you think is the best option. Um, really just use this as an additional cool tool as you come to a recommendation. Focus on all the data and information, everything in its entirety as you keep working through a recommendation with a real focus on the, the overall study considerations and the criteria um, as, as your main focus. The best plan will be one that addresses and adheres to that, those considerations as best of, as possible. possible. We had about 150 people uh, come to the, to the public information session, and we had 468 total respondents uh, participate in the survey. And th this is why we've said that's, that this format is good, because you could see how many people who weren't able to come to, to that meeting um, went online, watched the video, looked at the maps and figures, and they participated in the survey. So we had uh, almost uh, 468 total people respond to the survey, which is, is very good participation. In our, in our experience for a, for a study area of this size. Uh, the public was asked about their overall opinion towards an option, along with what concerns they had if they opposed any option. So options B and C received the most favored votes. Um, option C received uh, the fewest opposed votes. And you can see what we've done here is we have uh, given you the total number of people who have chose um, if, if uh, we asked them their opinion for each option, and then we've tallied the total number, and then this shows you a percentage of the total people who, have, uh, who responded to, to, this, to this question, uh, what percentage of, of, the, of the people uh, provided that feedback. Um, so as I said, option B and C received the most favored votes. Option C re received the fewest opposed votes. And then option A received the largest, num largest number of opposed votes. So you, uh, B and C were pretty close in terms of, if you look at the percentage, I, I kind of like lump strongly and somewhat in favor together when I look at these data. And you could see that uh, B and C were, were somewhat close if you look at them in, the, in, the, in total. And, um, and uh, there's, there are some differences here in the opposed with these. As you can see, A does have the largest, a, a much larger number of uh, respondents that were opposed, strongly or somewhat opposed, to option A. We asked them if they were in favor of the options, what was their primary reason for favoring an option? If, if they like an option, why did they like the option? And we asked them questions as it relates to the criteria. And, um, and most of the, pri the primary reason was that for people who favor it was it addresses the current overcrowding. 
and you can see the distribution of, uh, of results here for people who, ha who favored any particular option, why they, why they had favored it, and you could see addresses current overcrowding was the, was the primary dominant uh, reason that they did favor them in, in most cases. You could see it maintains exi existing neighborhoods was uh, somewhere in the 20 to almost 30% in, uh, in various options, A, A, B, and C. And the other, other ones were at, uh, you know, lower than those, than those percentages. Of those who opposed uh, con um, different op an option, we asked them uh, why did they, what was their primary concern for opposing a particular option. The two most common reasons for opposing option A and C were that they do not address the current overcrowding and does not address long-term enrollment needs. Um, I think a lot of this may have, was probably coming from um, feedback from Vincent Farm area and, and, and their, their concerns with the growth that's continuing in Vincent Farm. And uh, I think from reading through the comments, I did see a lot of consistent concern from that, com that, that school area uh, related to those. And the most common response for opposing option B was does not support maintaining or increasing diversity. So um, looking through, we studied, we studied the feedback from the public and uh, talking with the, committee, uh, with the public members and just reading the emails and the constant information that, that's been shared with you. We have, we've generated and drafted two new options, options D and E for your review. Um, uh, some, uh, these, both of these options, we used option C as a starting point. And the primary reason why we use C as a starting point was the, the, for the, the new uh, Northeast Area Elementary School and option C doesn't stretch as far south, which you had talked, there has been consistent feedback from the committee about the new school boundary being too widespread. And option C had it the, sort of the most compact of, of all the options. Um, option B and A stretch it further south, uh, uh, south of the school. So we started with C as a starting point. Um, the, the, do, the new options do put planning, both new options put planning block 30 in Chapel Hill. And so you'll notice that the new elementary school utilization goes down and uh, Chapel, Hills, uh, Chapel Hills goes up, but in trade, some more, more areas east of Chapel Hill that are in Vincent Farm are either left in Vincent Farm or there's some areas added into Vincent Farm. And I'll show you, we have a map here. But, um, but planning block 30 is in Chapel Hill in, in options D and E. Um, adjustments have been made between Kearney and Perry Hall to reduce utilization at Kearney because there was a lot of feedback about Kearney Elementary being too high um, and, and, and actually overloading Kearney um, as a result of this. And then there were some other adjustments made between Gunpowder and Seven Oaks to, to balance utilization and better align communities that are in close proximity to Seven Oaks Elementary School. I have them circled on a map here and I'll sh share them with you. These are the primary changes to, op to, to, to starting at C we made some other adjustments in this area, uh, uh, made some t uh, took some planning blocks back to Perry Hall in option D. In option D, this, this planning block, um, oh, it's hard to read that. This planning block on the northern part of, uh, is currently in Perry Hall, was put into Kearney in option D. Um, but this planning block has more students and it was kept in Perry Hall to try to keep, get Kearney's utilization down. Um, Seven Oaks, this, there's an area north of here that has a lot of students in it and they're ve in very close proximity to Seven Oaks. Um, and so what we did in option D is we, we kept this area in Seven Oaks, but in, in trade, this, these blocks right along here that are not in the, that are not, um, that are further away from Seven Oaks were assigned to gunpowder uh, in this option. So we, 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 this, this area was added into Seven Oaks, or kept in Seven Oaks, and this area was pulled out of Seven Oaks uh, into gunpowder to try to keep students close, as close proximity as possible. Uh, this puts them both, both these schools are at around 103% as a result of those adjustments as well. Um, and then finally, 
This, uh, the planting block 30 was put in the Chapel Hill off of, uh, from option C. And then these, these uh, uh, two planting blocks that are at the intersection of Callington and Route 7, um, yeah, that's Route 7, are, uh, are added into Vincent Farm in this particular option. So, um, those, so this, is an, this, this is option D. Option E, we have, this, we have similar adjustments over here. We took this planting block that was, in, that was in Kearney and kept it out. But in this option E, we didn't add any more into Kearney. So you'll notice that the numbers look a little bit different there for that. This is the same uh, adjustment that we had made in D. This exists in Seven Oaks and Gunpowder. And you know, when you guys start working in your groups, we certainly encourage you to evaluate that, these changes, and let us know what you think of these adjustments. Um, and then the other adjustments to op for option E that were a build off of C was uh, planting block 30 is in Chapel Hill. And then some of these uh, uh, planting blocks, I think it's five, eight, and nine, are, they're currently in Vincent Farm. They were moved in the Chapel Hill, followed along the railroad track here in, in option C. Uh, five, eight, and nine stay in Vincent Farm in option E. Uh, in order to not to, to keep Chapel Hill at a, at a decent utilization. But these options do have Vincent Farm on the high side. You see they're right at around 100% in, um, in, um, in these options. So as we've always said, there's no options going to be perfect. There's always pros and cons with any scenario. But these are a couple of adjustments and new options for you to look at and react to and tell us, tell us what you think. Does anybody have any questions before we, uh, we, what we'd like to do next is we'd like to let you break into, into some groups to look at the new data because there's a lot of new material and surveys. We want to give you some time to study those. But before we break you into small groups so that you can study it more, does anybody have any initial questions or comments they'd like to make? Uh, yes, and we'll get a microphone over to you. Um, I was just curious. I didn't see any um, advertisement or information on the BCPS Facebook page about the survey. I saw about like naming the new school, but I didn't see where they posted anything about the survey. So I was just curious why that why that was. Um, I know that the the, the district. Um, does take efforts to make to, to, to let the public know in this area about the survey and the public information session. Um, they, do, they do publish things. Um, is there anything that, that the district would like to add to? So I'm not aware if it was or wasn't on, on the Facebook page. It was on the district's main web page. Um, but we'll take note of that. There are more people paying attention to Facebook anymore, and that may be an, another way to get it out to, to more people in the future. Um, we're using Twitter quite a lot, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, social media has become a very good avenue for communication, so it certainly is a good suggestion. Any other questions or comments? So wh what we'd like you to do is we'd like to break you into the six small groups. You guys are already in your groups as, you, as the uh, colors on your sticker uh, name tags have, have uh, associated you to the groups. And we'd like you just to review the new options in the survey results. Uh, feel free to make yourself comfortable, look through the data, discuss things with the group. Um, there, as I said, we have some large plot maps over here on the table. And then we have large plot maps on the back. You guys can feel free to, to roam and, and take a plot map and look at them if, if, if you'd like. Um, we'd like you to just record and note your, any, any comments that you have as a result of your group discussion, if you have anything, any substantial findings or any, anything that you feel is notable. Um, we say here that we're going to reconvene in 30 minutes to share with the group, but there's another exercise, a group exercise right after this. So we're not going to have you report uh, out to the, to, the, to the whole committee after this. We're going to have you hold those comments, do the following exercise after 30 minutes, and then have you share all your comments in total to the, to the group once you're done with the second exercise. So we're going to give you the next 30 minutes just to take your time, look through the maps, look through the survey data, 
If you're done, if you're ready before then, we'll, we'll, we'll get you into the next exercise. But now for the next 30 minutes, we're going to let you guys do your work and study the new materials. And uh, I'll be, we'll be roaming around. If you have any questions, it would certainly help answer and interpret stuff. So go ahead. Just one additional comment. The, uh, the individual survey comments are posted on the website. You can access those through your laptops. Um, there is over 90 pages of comments, so we did not print them for each committee member. It would have been a little bit uh, paper prohibitive, but those are there if you wish to use the laptops to link and, uh, and uh, review the, uh, the, the written comments.
you guys have about, uh, you say about five minutes before we uh, move to the next exercise. Is that okay? And then once we, in five minutes, we'll, we'll be able to continue your discussion, but you're going to look at uh, making some, uh, doing another exercise.
Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, let's come together so that we can move into the next exercise, which builds upon the first. Um, for the next exercise, you're gonna look at each option, and you're gonna rate how well each option meets each of the boundary study um, guidelines. You'll notice you have a, um, a chart in your packets. It looks like this. So you can see uh, across the top row, we have listed the draft options A through E. And then here in this column, we've listed the boundary study considerations for you to kind of tease out and look at each option through that lens. So just very quickly, um, one of the first considerations is efficient use of capacity in affected schools. Then we're looking at the um, continuity of neighborhoods. You're looking at maintaining or increasing the diversity among schools to reflect the diversity of the region. You're looking at the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on students. Elimination of existing satellite boundaries. Long-term enrollment and capacity trends and future capital plans. And then lastly, um, but not least, um, least um, location of feeder school boundaries and continuity of feeder patterns. So we just wanted to give you an opportunity to, again, look at each option, but look at it through the lens of um, the nuances of the boundary study considerations. Um, the rating scale, which I cannot see, so I'm gonna move over here. Um, if you feel that um, the option meets the boundary study consideration very well, you would um, write a three. Um, if it meets it well, you're using a two. If you feel like it somewhat meets the consideration, you would put a one. Um, and then if you feel like it doesn't meet it at all, you would put a zero. All of that, I think, is in the key um, on the chart at the bottom, bottom of the page, okay? Um, are there any questions about what's happening? Okay, so we'll give you about a half an hour, and of course, if, if we feel you finished early, we can um, move forward, and we will be sharing out both um, the information on the chart and also any questions or ideas that came up in the first round of group, um, group, group discussion, okay? Thanks. You have a copy of that uh, scoring chart on your table, so you, you don't have to use the ones out of your packet. Uh, there's one uh, for your consideration at the table. And uh, once, it's, once it's done being filled out, if you want to leave it with me, I'll, I'll record it on a master sheet over here. Thank you.
You guys still have about uh, 19, 20 minutes or so, but as, as Melanie and Chris said, when your group is done with the scoring, um, when you're done with your scores, take them over here to Chris at this table. He's going to tally the totals so we could see if there's total, how the, how the committee as a whole would score. But Chris is over here. If, if, when you are ready with, to send them to him, you can go ahead and walk your, uh, your tallies over to him.
Okay, so you guys have about 10 minutes to, uh, to get your, uh, your scores on the, on the sheets. Um, a couple committee members have asked about uh, what if we wanted to make changes to an option and this and that. You know, I think that you could certainly note, take notes of things that you may want to modify in the options. We may not have time to do that tonight, but the next committee meeting we've got a full two hours to, to ring out, make, making adjustments to these options and then start weeding them out. So the next committee meeting we'll be doing, that'll be the focus, but definitely take note of adjustments and things that you like and don't like about the options in preparation for our next meeting. But about 10 minutes to get your uh, scores over to Chris and then we'll, we'll just have each group talk about some of their discussions.
Okay, so let's come together so that we can um, share out and talk about any observations that we had. So what we want to do now is um, we want to have you share out and we, we kind of want you to talk about anything that like you noticed, maybe you, when you tally the numbers or maybe you noticed um, something that maybe you hadn't seen before um, with regard to both the boundary study considerations and the options. Um, and then maybe a little bit of um, insight about what you all talked about in your small group dis discussions as you came to, um, to some of the ratings. So do I have a group that w would like to begin? Would volunteer to begin? Okay, great. <laughs> okay, um, one thing that we were looking very heavily at because of conversations that we had had at the public meeting was the parents at going to the New Northeast were extremely concerned about capacity issues, as they should be, knowing that there cannot be portable classrooms put there. So we focused heavily on that. We also focused very heavily on Vincent Farm and the relief that is needed there. And we found options D and E where Vincent Farm is at capacity, unacceptable. Thank you. Um, other thoughts? Okay. So could I maybe hear from this group, maybe just a little bit of a synopsis of your discussion and maybe anything that you noticed as you tallied um, and put down ratings. Okay, never, never mind. We had a question for D and E, um, how they were taking the, um, originally taking a Perry Hall block and giving it to Carney, and D and E, they're giving it back to Perry Hall. Our question is, is if Carney takes the blocks, our current, it's so hard because it's like three different ways. If Carney's taking those current blocks, will they then become an option for the new elementary school study? Well, I would say, remember one of the considerations or one, uh, one of the uh, things that the school board has established is to try to, to minimize the number of times any one student is reassigned. So if you're, if you're moving a block, say, to Kearney, one way or the other, um, if, if that school is part of the no, another study for another area outside of the study area, that area that was moved is going to be looked at very strongly to not be moved again. Because you don't want to, thinking of children, you don't want to move a student and then, and, and then have them move two times before they get out of elementary school. So, um, so I'd say that, that if it does, if that school is part of another study and that area is impacted, there's areas that are moved, the areas that were moved will be looked at very closely to try to avoid moving that same area again. Okay. So I think this group was gonna do, uh, you guys were gonna give your summary um, of findings and just key observations and things. So as a group, we were very much in agreement with this group here. We were very concerned about the two, two newest options with Vincent Farm staying at 100%. Um, and one of the other things that concerned us and one of the options it had the new development off of seven, which is apartments moving in, which would then take for, uh, Vincent Farm from potential growth of 1,300 units to over 1,500 units in the future. So we were certainly concerned, but we are concerned for all the quarter area schools because they're all still staying well over 100%. So that's like, we, we are trying to find ways to move things out, but every time we move with something, we're certainly putting something else out of whack. And we understand that no one wants an over, overcrowded school, but we are certainly um, very concerned about the potential growth in the Vincent Farm area and adding more potential growth to it when we already know how much potential growth is there. When, uh, when either of these two groups, as you guys were doing your exercise, did you see any type of, any of the options uh, consistently scoring low and other ones consistently scoring high? Did you, when, when you were looking through it, had you guys observed anything like that? Or were they pretty much consistently around the same scores? Or um, any, any thoughts uh, uh, regarding that? A scored, A scored pretty low on yours? Okay. 
and C scored higher for you guys? Okay. Okay. B scored high for that table. Okay. Okay. Well, if this table's done, then uh, have you guys have any other comments? Okay. So how about the back table? Um, could you all kind of share a little bit about what you discussed? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Hi. Um, so we thought we agreed that A on our survey was lower, but uh, the rest of them were kind of like kind of equal because we kind of feel like the same way, like Vincent Farms is not getting enough relief, but a lot of the schools are still left at high capacity. And our one question was, we understand the Kingsville being, you know, off the path a little bit, but if there's any way to move a couple of the it blocks to Kingsville to possibly help out some of the other schools, I don't know if that's something that everybody's still willing to look into just to see if that could help in any way. I do know that there was some public uh, comment about adding some areas to Kingsville. Um, and um, in talking with, with transportation and with the district, I think that um, it's something that you could consider, but Kingsville is a, a fairly rural school. I don't think they're on uh, city water and su on sewer, so they're on a septic system and such. Um, and it is, a, it is a, a good distance for them to go to Kingsville, and so there were some there were some suggestions that had been provided to move a couple planning blocks from where current gunpowder is up to Kingsville, and and I had when I looked at it and, and looking at all the input and knowing the nature of Kingsville and how this is the rural nature of the school, I didn't have that in there. But if the committee is uh, is is strongly feels like it's something that should be considered, it's something that you know you certainly could pursue. So the only concern that I have for putting more students at Kingsville would be looking at our drainage fields, our sewer capacity, as well as water pressure and the amount of water and flushing that is necessary for that amount of students. Each time the water is flushed and the capacity drops within the boiler unit, it then impacts our heat because we're on a boiler system. So it's a much greater, um, I think, digging into whether or not we can house more students at the school. I'd like to know like what the water capacity needs to be in order to house more than what we currently have as we're almost at 100% in all of the options. So we're at our capacity and yet we still have pressure and water and sewer concerns even on a daily basis just with what we house currently. Right, and I think that I've heard that from the district and that's, that is a limitation for that for that facility, because it's, it's, it's a unique nuance of how the services and utilities are out there. Um, speaking from a community stand of po stand of standard point of view, that's probably not a good choice either to adjust Kingsville. If you look, it would take um, the very bottom part. Those are communities that are already, already established. Um, some go to gunpowder now. The new um, options would send them to the new school. I think it would really break up communities. I understand what you're saying, but it's really what she's saying about the water usage and then the communities, it's really not the best option. Okay, so um, I don't think we've heard from this group yet, yeah? Okay, are you all ready to share out some of your observations and um, perhaps uh, what you noticed about the numbers? So some of the positives with um, we're going through all of the maps, correct? Sure. Any, so any, yeah, any so um, yeah, key findings we, that you have. We found that um, most of them were pretty um, diverse across the board. So that that was one of the um, one of the positives. Um, again, what we looked at was um, utilization and job of view. Um, Perry Hall and um, Vincent Farm seem to always keep coming um, into into consideration. So their uh, utilization was way above um, 100%, some pieces are 125, 124%. So what we try to do is um, try to look at everything and make a decision based off of, um, of course, safety. And then um, for schools that, that it was their last chance to, you know, to make those changes, and as well as, um, again, uh, utilization. Sure thing, and that's, that touches on a lot of key conversations that have been going on about 
whether you provide relief, uh, use the op this opportunity to provide relief to the schools that are further north that aren't going to get much more opportunity for relief and leave some of those schools on the southern end of the planning area, study area on the higher side, knowing that they do have a high chance of getting relief from the next, uh, the, the, the next process that's coming down the road for the Ridge Road area, so. All right, thank you. And um, could we hear from the Red Group? Hi. Most of the things that um, we feel have kind of already been said for like the last group to go, um, the biggest concern is about the new schools starting so far under capacity in the newer, um, in the newer maps, especially compared to Perry Hall and Joppa View, where they're not really getting any relief. And I do understand there's another boundary study, you know, that they have a potential, but that doesn't mean that they're going to actually get relief at that time. And so they should get at least a little bit right now with hopes of getting a little bit more later and not starting the new school so far into capacity. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other um, any other comments? Yes. Um, I do want to note that um, in option D and E, the new school is starting under capacity, but a lot of that is not because it's going to Perry Hall. It's because they're losing PB30. Um, Perry Hall's numbers go up because they are picking up um, the area down in Dunf Dunfield. I don't know what that PB is, but um, they're picking that back up and taking it from Kearney. So I just want to make note because PB30 is not circled as a change on your D and E map, and it is a change. So um, I, just right, want yes. everyone, I just want everyone to know that's why those numbers dropped on D and E for the Northeast School. Yes, you're right. The, the Northeast utilization, um, it's really op nor the Northeast Area Elementary School. Uh, if you look at option C, um, it's that planning block 30 with 43 or so students coming out of it that is the reason why that utilization goes down. So when we do get into the next, uh, next meeting at the next, uh, next uh, after the holiday, we're gonna offer up any suggested changes to the options. And so if, if, the, if the group does like an option, but you like the way Carney looks in this option, I think it certainly is viable for us to say, okay, well maybe we can make these adjustments to this option to help to, to try to achieve utilization in one area if you, but in, in still build on the strengths of another, of another area of an option. So it's, it is something like if you like components of an option, say for instance planning block, you like an area but you don't like the low utilization of the new school, you can always suggest, okay, I like this option but I would like this adjustment to the planning blocks to, to, to address the considerations and such. Did every group uh, get to the, get the provide their input? Any other committee members want to um, provide any uh, any comments or anything, any talks that they had at their small groups? Okay, moving along, we've got the we've got the tally here. Um, uh, that's a 2.5. Okay, <laughs> we got a we went to the 0.5 uh, scale here, but that's okay. That's fine, no problem. Um, so. So looking at this, this shows the, uh, we'll share this with you. This will be posted online to uh, the results of the scoring. You can see everybody, sc everybody scored uh, the satellites. I'm looking for the high numbers. Satellite, ex eliminating satellites was achieved in every single option. So that's on the high side. Um, definitely scores high. We've got a consistent high score, 13 at A, and then 14s for diversity, maintaining diversity. Um, transportation on the higher side for D and E, um, B and C have 14, one less, and then A is on the lower. A also scores the lower on the continuity of neighborhoods, and B and C is actually higher than D and E um, for that component. And then uh, efficient capacity use, uh, it looks like B and C uh, score the highest, and A, D and E score the lowest. So. Um, um, you could see the long-term enrollment. As you know, you know this, this process, the new school isn't going to provide relief to, it's not going to be the end-all solution to this area's over, overcrowding. And uh, I think that th this, these scores definitely show that, show that your acknowledgement of that, that, this, that there still is um, 
that it's not going to solve all of the over, over uh, utilization concerns. But uh, C scored the highest with nine, uh, B had six, and then um, A had three, and then D and E had two. So you felt like D and E really scored, uh, did a poor job uh, in terms of long-term enrollment and capacity trends. Um, feeders uh, was a pretty balanced uh, scoring across the board, but again, B and C scored the highest by just by one by a margin of one point. Um, so what we'll do is we'll also uh, probably put. I I, I kind of like to look at a total for these to see how each option has it in terms of a total. But we'll 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 include that and in when we give you uh, post it online, and we'll bring this back. Um, at the next committee meeting uh, and post it online so that you can benefit from it. But this does kind of show a little bit of where the committee, how the committee feels, how the options size up. You could see that there are pros and cons with, um, with every option and not, n there's not one single option that scores a perfect 18 across the board and that no option, this reinforces the fact that no option is going to be perfect. There are going to be goods of an option and bads, bads uh, components of an option. Um, with this, with this information right here, does anybody have? Do you guys have any comments or any, any thoughts based on what what we've what we've seen with the, the results of this? <coughs> okay, well, um, we're moving right along, guys. I think that we're going to be able to uh, finish early tonight. Um, so, a couple of things. Um, our next meeting is really uh, it's very critical that we have maximum committee participation. Um, we really encourage you uh, to, to come out and we, we, because this is the night, the next after the Thanksgiving holiday when we're going to need you to, to you're going to be providing your recommendation. So uh, the first point is that's that's important. Uh, Mr. Roberts, did you want to make yeah, No, I just really wanted to reiterate this point to the committee as we wrap up today that this December 6 meeting is the last one that this group will have together. So you guys have had wonderful attendance really throughout and kudos to all of you and, and many, many, many thanks uh, for giving of your time and volunteering your time and effort um, and talents to this process over the past going on four months now. So as you go into December 6, we want to really maintain that level and, and as was mentioned, really attendance is critical because that will be the time at this time on the 6, around this hour, where you'll be making a final kind of vote, if you will, um, and recommendation that will then move forward. Um, and then following that, I'll make a recommendation with Dr. Brown to the superintendent, and then we'll make that recommendation to the board um, and follow the pattern in the calendar that you have in your packets. Um, so hopefully no snow, shouldn't be. They're calling for a warmer winter. Um, and <laughs> certainly snow that early in this region is, is a little out of the ordinary. But that being said, I wanted to thank you again for your time over the past few months, knowing that we are coming up on this last meeting, and we look forward to seeing all of you here um, to have your voices heard and have your input um, heard. So thank you. Yes, and uh, yes, I, I, can't, I can't concur with that enough. It's, uh, you guys have been a great group. Really, uh, I think that you're focusing on the needs of all uh, students and doing your task very well. Um, did you have a comment or question? I'm sorry, I don't know if it was clear. Are you going to be making further adjustments to the options for our next meeting? Well, that's no? that was going to touch on that. Okay. So uh, the next meeting, we've got two hours to work to, to come to a recommendation. Okay, we're not going to do um, we're not going to uh, have any type of exercises for you. We're really going to focus on coming to a recommendation at the next meeting. So I was going to tell you that to think about in advance of the next meeting, you've got about a couple of weeks over the Thanksgiving holiday when you're eating turkey and such. Think about the options and think about which options you like, you think best accomplish the objectives and, uh, and considerations. Think about adjustments that you may want to consider or that you may want to suggest to the committee to an option to make it better and to improve its effectiveness and uh, ad adhering to the objectives. So uh, when we get to the next committee meeting, we're going to open the floor for the committee to provide suggested changes to any option. And then we're going to have a discussion about that. And, and, if, and if there is consensus among the group to make an adjustment that everybody's in agreement on, 
then we will just note it, uh, this is option X with these noted changes. If there's not consensus on that, then it'll probably become an, its own option if, if, the, if the group seems to be divided. Then th there may be another option that says option, you know, option X will hold, but then there will be option X with changes. And, and the committee, when, they come, when it comes time for them to start voting, casting their votes, you'll have another option with, with or without the changes that the committee member had suggested. So um, it'll, we'll go through a process at the next meeting of, of vetting the scenario, the changes to the scenarios that you feel are, uh, that improve the effectiveness of the boundary option. So make sure that that's all laid out and everything, every adjustment that's be, that you guys think should be made is put out on the floor and let the committee consider it and have it as an option for, for you to consider when you cast your recommended vote. Um, anybody else have any questions? That's a good question. That was I was going to touch on that before we adjourn. Well, we are almost there, guys. We have one more meeting. Um, I hope you all have a very happy Thanksgiving, restful Thanksgiving, and safe. We'll be back here on December the 6th. Um, from 6 to 8 here at Perry Hall High School. I think the 7th is a snow date, isn't it? So, so hopefully we don't have any snow, and, uh, but we'll see you here on the 6th uh, at 6 o'clock. Thank you all. Have a good night and happy holiday. <laughs>